Hey, I feel really good about last week's elections, but America is still in big trouble. Take a look. A woman goes to a hockey game and she wears a Let's Go Brandon t-shirt. And that's too much. That's too much for the hockey team, for the people who own the arena. This actually happened in Wichita, Kansas at a Wichita Thunder game. She's wearing a Let's Go Brandon shirt and they take her out. You see the shirt? Let's go, Brandon. And her evening is over. No more hockey for her. <laughs> Nobody can believe it. It's, uh, it's absurd, right? <laughs> but this is happening. Let's go, Brandon is somehow hate speech. Now, um, hey, let's face it. At a hockey game, bad things happen. Often to the delight of fans, okay? There are fights. You can say all kinds of things from the stands. Now. The team, in my opinion, suspiciously is saying she was not removed for the Let's Go Brandon t-shirt, but for her inappropriate language at a hockey game. Again, you're allowed to say stuff at a hockey game. Was it the chant, Let's Go Brandon? Because, hey, they're trying to fire that pilot from US Air. This is still America, and some crazy stuff is happening right now. We've got to, we gotta take care of each other and not let them get away with this. In the meantime, Democrats are feeling mighty proud because they passed that ridiculous infrastructure package. Uh, this is, okay, it sounds great. Oh, money for roads, bridges, uh, airport repair. No, the fine print is weird. And some of this climate change stuff, it is, this is not a good bill. It boosts the deficit by, what, a quarter billion dollars. And uh, let's face it, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, Pete Buttigieg, the Democrats in Congress, they may call it Build Back Better, but they know nothing, nothing about building anything. These are career politicians. They know how to ask for money. They know how to do favors and ask for favors and ask then for more money and say things that they think will get people to like them. They've never built anything. You know who has and you know why he, why he didn't fit in? Yeah, Donald Trump. He is a creator. This is the guy who actually knows how to build things and they tried to chase him out of town. You can look in the Art of the Deal book. This is real stuff. This is real skill. They pretend it's not what he did with that ice skating rink or the hotel in Midtown and hundreds of other properties. They say, ah, no, 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 that's showmanship. No, it's real skill that they lack. And unfortunately for all of us, they tried to sabotage his presidency. Remember these characters? <laughs> And by the way, something that they have in common, they don't know how to build anything either. All of these characters, Donald Trump actually brought world-class talent to Washington, D.C., and that's why Washington, D.C. had very little use for a guy like that. In the meantime, this Build Back Better plan may or may not pass the Senate. We'll see. Um, COVID remains something that they're fixated on, exploiting it, I believe, exploiting it because, look, they think it will keep them in power because it helped get them into power. When Joe Biden was able to hide out in the basement for a year, that was a major, major benefit to his campaign. Because when Joe is out among the people, we know this by now, he screws up all the time. He is a gaff machine, yelling at construction workers, saying awful things. He would not have won without COVID. So now COVID, I believe, is a way they think they can keep and enhance their power and create obedient children. We'll get to that in a moment. Who remembers Nancy Pelosi at that silly event in California? Not wearing a mask, no one there wearing a mask, except by the way, their servants. Isn't that interesting? Take a look at Randy Weingarten. She is the uh, head of the teachers union, the national teachers union. Here she is at a big convention, not wearing a mask. This weekend, not wearing a mask. People next to her, not wearing a mask. You saw those poor kids, the students? She's been very, very hard about masks and making the classrooms all COVID compatible. She had to apologize because she was caught. Oh, big apology. And the heart of it, if kids are wearing masks in schools to protect themselves and others, educators must wear masks inside as well. I'm sorry. I don't think I'm sorry is good enough. After what they've done to our kids, 
I'm sorry is not good enough. Finally, though, sanity from a, an appeals court in Louisiana, the Fifth Circuit, they, they stayed the vaccine mandate. Uh, a three-judge panel, uh, the petition was filed by business groups, religious groups, advocacy groups, several states. They claim that OSHA exceeded its authority. This has the potential to head to the Supreme Court, and the panel agreed. The, uh, it was stayed. There are grave statutory and constitutional issues with the mandate. The mandate is hereby stayed pending further action. That is just a breath of fresh air. OSHA, they can regulate. They don't pass laws. For us to all do something, there has to be a law. And this OSHA thing is not a law. Right, Professor? The Biden administration is taking a law, OSHA, which is um, designed to regulate uh, conditions that arise in the workplace. And they're trying to use it to uh, turn employers into public health agencies. If we're going to have a vaccine mandate, the way to do that is to go to Congress and ask them to pass a law. Mr. Essenberg from uh, the Wisconsin Institute for Law and Liberty. I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, so many have been exploiting this. Uh, we mentioned Joe Biden, but everybody and the virtue signaling that comes with it and the mass everywhere, it's getting, it's getting ridiculous. And the overt politicization, now sometimes it's not that overt. You gotta listen and you gotta remember. Uh, Vivek Murthy, I think his name is, the Surgeon General of America now, also was advising Joe Biden during the campaign. Uh, take a look at this. He comes off a little warm and cuddly, but he's not. The Fifth Circuit Court of Appeals yesterday blocked the mandate, citing grave and statutory and constitutional issues. I know you're not a lawyer, but is the administration confident this can survive the legal challenges? Well, Martha, the president and the administration wouldn't have put these requirements in place if they didn't think that they were appropriate and necessary. And the administration is certainly prepared to defend them. But let's step back for a moment and just look at why these are so important. Throughout our history, we've seen that we have used vaccine requirements to protect the population. Okay. Started back with George Washington, in fact. He sounds very reasonable, right? He is a brutal political player. Absolutely. And he did Joe Biden's bidding during the campaign. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please join the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe too. Hit the bell icon to be alerted to breaking news. And remember, there's a whole lot more on Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news network. Newsmax TV, where real news for real people.